Welcome to question 7 of the 2019 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 7 we're told that the shaded region in the diagram shown is bounded by the vertical axes, the graph of the function with rule f of x equals sine of pi x, and the horizontal line segment that meets the graph at x equals a where we know that one is less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to three on two. Let a of a be the area of the shaded region. And for part a, our job is to show that a of a is equal to that rule. So to calculate the area in terms of a, we're going to evaluate the following integral between zero and a, because we go from zero to a along the x-axis, and that's where the area is bound between. And then our upper curve or our upper function has a rule sine of pi x. And then we subtract away from that the lower curve, which is this line segment here in red, which was described as the horizontal line segment that meets the graph at x equals a, which means it has a rule y equals sine of a pi, when we sub a in to get the y value of that line. So we're going to subtract away sine of a pi in that integral, and then all of that is done with respect to x. So to evaluate that, we're first going to need to find the antiderivative. So for the blue function, the upper function, which is sine of pi x, we're going to anti-differentiate that, and looking at the formula sheet, we'd end up with negative one over pi cos of pi x as its antiderivative, and then we'll subtract away from that and the trick here is sine of a pi it doesn't actually have the variable x in it. So it's actually just a constant. So its antiderivative will just be x multiplied by sine of a times pi. And then of course, that is still going to be evaluated between the terminals of zero and a. So to evaluate that, we're now going to substitute in the upper terminal. So we will have negative one on pi times cos of pi x, but wherever there's an x, we're replacing it with a, so we're going to have pi a, and then we subtract away from that, a substituted into the next, wherever there's an x, so x becomes a, and then that's still multiplied by sine of a pi. And then we need to subtract away the antiderivative with the lower value substituted in, which is zero. So for the blue, we'll have negative one on pi cos, and then where we had pi x, we'll now have pi times zero, which is simply zero. So we'll have cos of zero there. And then we need to subtract away from that x sine of a pi with x is zero substituted into there. So zero times anything will just give us zero. And then we just need to simplify this. So cos of zero, we know is equal to one. And with that in mind, this is going to equal negative one on pi cos of pi a just stays as it is. So negative one divided by pi times cos of pi a. And then we have minus a sine a pi. So that stays the same, minus a sine of a pi. And then we have subtract negative one on pi times one which is actually plus one divided by pi. And then of course we subtract away zero, which doesn't change anything. So if we compare what we found, which is down here, to what we were asked to show, we can see that even though it's not in the same order, we have all of the same terms. So we've managed to show that a of a does in fact equal that expression. And in the examiner's report, we can just see that they used a similar method to the one that we used on the previous slide to complete 7a. So for part b of this question, we're asked to determine the range of values of a of a. So what are the smallest and largest values that that function can take? And you may be tempted to use some sort of calculus technique to find the minimum and maximum values. However, this question really boils down to just looking at the restrictions that are on a. So we know that a ranges between one and its upper limit of three divided by two. So if we consider the case where a equals one, that would be this position here on the graph. And the region that it would enclose would be the green area that I'm drawing on now. 
So that would just be this part of the graph here. And that would be the minimum value. So the minimum occurs when a is equal to one. So to find that value, we're just going to substitute one into the rule a of a, which we were asked to show in part a of this question. So a of one is going to equal one divided by pi minus one divided by pi times cos of a pi, but a is one, so we just are left with pi in there. And then we subtract away a sine of a pi, where a is one again, so we just subtract away sine of pi. From there, we know that cos of pi is negative one and sine of pi is zero. So therefore, a of one is simply equal to one on pi, subtract one on pi times negative one, which is actually plus one on pi, and then minus zero. So this just equals two divided by pi when we add those two values together. The maximum value occurs when a is equal to three on two, which was the other part of the restriction on a. So to find its value, we're just going to do a of three on two this time, which is going to give one on pi minus one on pi times cosine of a pi. So a being three on two will give three pi on two, and then minus away a, which is three on two, times sine of three pi on two, when we plug a is three on two into that. Next, we can work out that cos of three pi on two is equal to zero, and sine of three pi on two is equal to negative one. So therefore, a of three on two is going to equal one on pi, and then this is minus one on pi times zero, which is just zero, and then we have minus three on two times negative one, which is plus three on two. So to answer this question, the range of values that A takes on is from a smallest value of two on pi through to a largest value, which we found when A was three on two, and that was one on pi plus three on two. And because both of those values or both a values were included in its domain or its restriction we use square brackets there for the range so that is the answer to part b of this question and from the examiner's report we can see that they calculated the range in exactly the same way they just substituted one and three on two into the function and quoted the range with the only difference being they made a common denominator for the upper limit. For part one of part C, it says express in terms of A of A for a specific value of A, the area bounded by the vertical axes, the graph of Y equals two times sine of pi X plus root three on two all in a bracket and the horizontal axes. So even though the examiner's reports don't have the exact percentages of students that got this question correct, I imagine that this one posed a challenge to those students that had to sit this exam. So the best way that I can recommend that we could do this question is by considering a graph of the region under consideration. So once again, I'm just going to draw the graph of sine of pi x, and we can consider that graph. We know that that value is two, and we know that value is one. So that is just y equals sine of pi x again. And now instead of considering a translation of plus root three on two up, I'm just going to put the line root three on two, but negative root three on two down here. And then we're going to consider what value up here, which is our value of A essentially, gives that value. Because now the shaded region that we have just here, so if I shade that in in orange, that area there is going to be equal to the area inside those brackets and we can just double it to get the area of two sine pi x plus root three on two. So now our job is just to find that value of a. So we would just be solving the equation sine of pi x needs to equal negative root three on two, and that will help us to find that a value. So it'll appear as x first, the way I'm solving it, but we can interpret that as the a value that we require. 
So therefore pi times x using our knowledge of the unit circle must equal four pi on three. And then if we divide both sides by pi, we'll just end up with x equals four on three. So in other words, our a value is four on three. So remembering that we're going to have to double this to calculate the area, our area is going to be two times a, but with the specific value of little a being four on three. So that is the answer to part one of part C. So from the examiner's report, we can see that they took a slightly different approach to the one that I displayed on the previous slide. However, we still get to the same answer where it's going to be two times A with four on three inside the brackets. So for part two of part C, it says, hence or otherwise find the area described in part CI. And that was that the area that we found was two times A with four on three substituted into it. So that is going to equal two times, we're going to have a big set of brackets that applies to all of this, and it's going to be one on pi minus one on pi times cos of a pi, but a is four, so we get four pi on three. And then we subtract away a sine of ax with a being four on three, which is minus four on three sine of four pi on three. So now our job is just to simplify that down as much as possible. So leaving the two out the front, we're going to have one on pi and then minus one on pi times cos of four pi on three. We then have a look at four pi on three for cos and we know that its exact value is negative a half. So minus one on pi times minus one on two actually gives plus one on two pi. And then we'd have minus four on three times sine of four pi on three. But sine of four pi on three is going to be minus root three on two. So we'd have minus four on three times minus root three on two, which is going to give positive four root three on six. And then we're going to simplify that down as much as possible. So we could make this two times two on two pi plus one on two pi, just to get a common denominator for the first two terms, plus, and this is the same as two pi on three when we simplify that. And then multiplying the two through all of that, we would find this is equal to three on two pi times two, which is just three on pi, plus, and then instead of being two root three on three, when we multiply that by two, we actually get four root three on three. So that is going to be our final answer for this question. And looking at the examiner's report, we can see that they have that answer, but in a slightly different form. So there would be several different forms that would be acceptable as an answer to this question because it didn't ask for it in a specific format. So the one that we got or the one that's quoted there would be absolutely fine.